Hello and welcome back to Algebra, the video series where we talk about algebraic structures like groups, rings and fields. And indeed, in today's part 2, we will start with a very basic notion called semigroup. It's a weaker form of a group we will define afterwards, but it's already very useful for us. However, before we go into the first definition, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube or on Patreon. And here I can remind you, with the link in the description, you find a lot of additional materials for all the videos. Ok, with that I would say we are ready for the first definition of this video series. And the basic object we need for that here is just a set A. And now any map we can denote with capital F and that goes from the Cartesian product A times A into A again, gets a special name, we call it a binary operation on the set A. Indeed the name here makes sense because we have two inputs from the set A and one output from the set A. However, I can already tell you that for the output we rarely use the ordinary map notation. Indeed, the image of two inputs AB you would write as F of AB or even with additional parentheses here. And of course, in algebra this is way too cumbersome, we really want to use an operation symbol. And one common one is just to use a circle between the two elements A and B. Hence A circle B just denotes the output we have for our binary operation here. Moreover, also often you see a star for this operation symbol. And only if there are a lot of operations we use, we would use the name of the map in between. So there you have it, different notations, but they all denote the same thing, namely an element in A again. However, I also have to tell you, if we consider some special cases for sets and operations, we use even more notations. So for example, sometimes we write this binary operation as a multiplication. In fact, in this case you also find the shortest possible notation at all, which is just putting the two elements together. And this is what we usually call the juxtaposition. Indeed, this is a very effective way to write down a binary operation on a set A. And now you might already know, another possibility would be to use a plus sign. Ok, so these are the most common ones, but maybe you also find some others depending which book you use. Now, in this important definition, there's also some law hidden you should always keep in mind. We can call it closure law, but it's indeed a very trivial one. It states that A combined with B is always an element in the set A. This means this fact holds for all inputs A, B in A. Indeed, this is immediately given in the definition and you might even say there's no other possibility at all. However, sometimes we restrict such a binary operation to a subset of A. And then you only have a binary operation on the subset if this closure law holds for the subset. Therefore, this is the thing you have to check when dealing with subsets. Ok, then I would say we are ready for an example of a binary operation. There let's take a set A with three elements. And maybe let's use some common elements, let's call them 1, 2 and 3. So we just have numbers here, but this is not so important because we will define a very abstract binary operation. And we can define that by a so called operation table. This works for a finite set because we are able to write down all possible combinations. In fact, we just have to write down the whole Cartesian product A times A. Therefore, we put the first entry here on the left and the second entry here on the top. This means the binary operation given by this circle first gets an element from here and then from there. So in other words, the output from one circle two we write down here. And now we could just define that the output of that is just one. Hence by filling out the table we have the definition of the operation. And this definitely works if all the outputs lie inside the set A again. But then you should already see 
that the order of the operation matters. So one circle two is not the same as two circle one. In fact, by definition, the one thing is one and the other thing is three. So this is something you should immediately remember. The commutativity is not given in the definition of a binary operation. Therefore, if you combine more elements in a row, the order also matters. This means we have to set parentheses to denote in which order we read the operation. So for example here, we first do 1 with 2 and then we combine this result with 3. In other words, we have 1 circ 3. And by looking at the table, we know that this gives us 2. So no problem here, with the parentheses we have a well-defined notation on the left. However, now the question is, what happens if we set the parentheses in another way? And indeed, another possibility here would be to first calculate 2 circle 3 and use this result in the combination 1 circle this. Hence, we get 1 circle 1, which is, as we can read in the table as well, equal to 3. So you see, this brings us to a different result, so also this property does not hold in general. However, this is exactly the point of the video, because often we want binary operations where we can omit these parentheses. This means if we don't change the overall order of the elements here, we should not change the result. And in fact, this property we call associativity. And this immediately brings us to the notion of a semicoup. So by the name, you should already expect that this is an object with more structure. More precisely, we have the same two things as before, namely a set we now call S and a binary operation on it we call circle again. So you see, writing that as a pair makes it to a new object we can give a name. And now in fact we call this a semigroup if one property is fulfilled. And there you already know what we want, we talked about this before, we want that parentheses don't matter. More concretely, it means if you have three elements in that sense, you can set parentheses here or at that position and you get the same result. And we have this equality for all possible elements A, B, C from S. And as already mentioned, this is the thing that makes the binary operation associative. Therefore, you should recognize that a semigroup is not complicated at all, it's just a set together with a special binary operation. And please don't forget, associativity now allows us to omit the parentheses altogether. In general, writing this for a binary operation would make a problem, but not for an associative one. However, still, it's not allowed to change the overall order in this combination here. Okay, then I would say, let's look at an example again. And there we can be a little bit fancy and we can look at the set of functions. And usually I want to denote that with a curved f. Moreover, let's say we look at functions from r to r. So the objects here are not so complicated, we just have a map we can call f and it has domain r and codomain r. And there you should know such a special map we usually call a function. So our set s is now this fr and an element a is a function f. And now for the binary operation, we can take the composition of functions. This just means you put one function into the other and you get out a new function. So definitely a binary operation, but now the question is, is it also associative? If it is, we have our first example of a semicoup. Okay, then I would say, let's check it and let's take three elements from fr. And maybe we simply call them f1, f2, f3. And then we can define two new functions and maybe let's call them g and h. So g is our first combination here and h the second possibility. And now it's important to know that both give us well-defined functions from r into r. And how they are exactly defined we can just check by putting in an element x from r. So the first question here is, what is the output g of x? By definition, it's just the same as putting x into this composition. 
However, by the definition of the composition, this just means that we put this output into the function f1. And then you see, we just have to repeat the whole argument inside the function f1. In other words, we have to put in f3 of x into f2. So not so complicated, this is the result g of x for every point x. And now let's do the same for h of x. There it's a little bit different because it means we have to put in the result f3 of x into this function here. So the whole thing reads f1 after f2 of f3 of x. And then again we just have to repeat the definition of the composition here. And then it might not surprise you that we get exactly the same result as before. So you see the two outputs here are the same no matter which x in R we choose and therefore the two functions g and h coincide. And exactly this makes the composition of functions an associative binary operation. And with that we have our first semigroup. And now you know we would write it as a pair set combined with the binary operation gives us the semigroup. Okay, then I would say with the next videos, let's look what we can do with such semigroups. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye.